everyone, Steve Harville with Creative Ventures and welcome to our latest chapter in the Did You Know Story series. This one starts in a darkened movie theater. You remember what those were pre-zombie apocalypse. And I was watching the fantastic Ridley Scott's film adaptation of the equally fantastic Andy Weir novel, The Martian. Now, talented uber actor and singer and writer and comedian Donald Glover plays a guy named Rich Purnell in the movie who is from the Astrodynamics Department of NASA. Now, here's a little spoiler, so just be careful if you haven't seen The Martian. You may want to jump out. Um, Astrodynamics deals with the application of Newton's laws to large objects in space like spaceships, and Rich has a wild idea for the Martian spaceship um, in an effort to save the single astronaut abandoned on the planet Mars. Um, and during this aspect of the film, the crew of this spaceship sends a very cryptic message to NASA. It appears on a large screen during the film and it says, tell Rich Purnell he's a steely-eyed missile man. And in the theater I smiled because it wasn't cryptic to me. I knew exactly what a steely-eyed missile man was. And it wasn't the first time that phrase had appeared in a movie. In Ron Howard's 1995 Oscar-winning film Apollo 13, about the moon mission that turned into a rescue mission after a cascading level of problems impacted the three astronauts on the Apollo 13 capsule. One of those was a buildup of CO2. And in an effort to try to save the astronauts' lives, a group of engineers was tasked with using only the elements that were on the capsule um, to create something that allowed the scrubbers from one module to be applied to the other module. And they built this Rube Goldberg type thing that they had the astronauts hooked up. And as everybody was watching the levels of the CO2 rising, um, they flipped on this device, this piece together element, and waited. And the alarm went off and the CO2 started to drop. And the actor playing real life NASA engineer Ed Smiley looked, had a great sense of relief and dropped his shoulders. And the Capcom's guy, the guy in charge of communications with the capsule, turned to him and said, you, my friend, are a steely-eyed missile man. You see, the term steely-eyed missile man is the highest accolade somebody can give someone at NASA. When you are knighted with that title, it shows that you have done something beyond the call of duty. Strangely enough, um, it didn't find its origins on Apollo 13. Instead, it was the mission that preceded Apollo 13, the mission of Apollo 12. And as Apollo 12 was taking off and its Saturn rocket was expelling its propellant, it was struck by lightning, not once but twice. And when that happened, a concophony of alarms filled the cabin along with flashing red lights saying that there were dangers in all sorts of areas, including telemetry. Telemetry is the data that is sent from the capsule to mission control, allowing them to make decisions, allowing them to guide the capsule from computers that they had there. Um, it was a split second thing that happened and no one knew what to do except John Aaron's. Now, John Aarons was the capsule engineer who was on duty at that time. He was a physicist and an engineer, a good Texan. Um, and he had seen something like this before in training. And he immediately clicked on his mic to the commander and said, uh, switch your SEC to auxiliary. And everybody at NASA turned and looked at him. No one knew what the SEC even was. Uh, he said, tell him to do it now. And the Capcoms, the communicator of the capsule, tells the astronauts, Switch your SEC to auxiliary, for which the astronauts responded, what? The what? This small dial, people didn't even know what it was, but Alan Bean, an astronaut on Apollo 12, knew exactly what the SEC was, and he knew where the switch was. He flipped open the protective area, switched it to auxiliary, and moments later, the telemetry, the alarms went off, everything came back to normal. And in that split second, the cool, calm demeanor of John Aaron saved the mission he became titled the first steely-eyed missile man. So what does this mean? What is, what's this about? This is about recognition. It's about telling somebody they are of value. It's about people that rise to the occasion. It's about people that do their everyday job. At Creative Ventures over the years, we've designed a lot of reward programs for companies. Some of them as simple as a Starbucks card, other ones major celebrations on stage, followed by bonuses, depending on what the issue was and what the culture was. But you need to be looking at that now. You know that when people are given an exit interview when they leave a company, think of this as a talent drain, they're asked a bunch of questions. There are two macro elements that always come out. 
Why are you leaving? One, there was no opportunity for me to grow. Two, I didn't feel a value. It's your job to make your people feel a value. It's a leadership tenet. And in today's days, where people are more disconnected than ever, the ability that they see the value in what they do is a pinnacle leadership element. So the question is, what are you doing for your steely-eyed people? You should be making them feel a value because they need it now more than ever.